sat there, and that's, it seems to be the style of... Welcome to uh, Charles North and to our celebration of the St. Paul Street Park uh, and all the work that's been done here. Uh, my name is Don Donahue and I'm the president of the Charles North Community Association. Uh, you are in Charles North right now, so welcome. And uh, we have a, a, a very fun and interesting evening or after, uh, uh, program for you. It won't take very long. In fact, I'm not going to take very long. I wanted to say welcome to several uh, dignitaries that are here. Uh, first uh, uh, to uh, Carl Stokes. Uh, uh, yay, Carl! <laughs> uh, Jack Young was here, uh, but I had to go to another meeting. Uh, are there any other dignitaries here? I believe there was someone from Ben Cardin's office was supposed to be. <laughs> other than me, okay? No, I'm here. Okay. Uh, uh, but thank you and uh, all of you for coming. and. Uh, 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 you may please continue to eat and, and as we as we go ahead. All right, uh, Linda. Yeah. Well, again, thank you everybody for coming. Um, would any of our dignitaries like to come up and say a few words? We'd love to hear from come you. On, come on up, Carl. Come on up, Thomas. Is anyone here from uh, Senator Cardin's office? Okay. Mark Sisman. Hi. Hi, everybody. Yeah, I uh, actually just stopped by because Linda said there was going to be free pizza. And, um, and so I stopped by. It was Joe Square Pizza. It's the best pizza in town. Uh, it's in the lovely 12th District. And so thanks to everybody, uh, the community, uh, uh, Dr. Bob and his wife, and, and uh, everyone who's been volunteering and being a part of this, not just today, but for the past several years. Uh, Dr. Wonderful, Charlie, everybody, Peter, uh, folk who have just been working very hard uh, doing what comes naturally to most Baltimoreans, which is taking care of their neighborhood, taking care of their community. Sometimes folk think it's something stranger, but it's not. Linda and, and her neighbors and, and uh, folk who live in the community uh, take care of their neighborhood every day. And uh, we thank them for it. And they don't just take care of the physical, but they look out for each other, they look out for the children. And so I just came by to thank them uh, for making me look good by having this as a part of my district. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Can I oh, don't have to. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My uh, name is Tommy, Tommy Phillips. I work for Council President Young's office. I send greetings. Uh, it's a wonderful day to, day to just be out on a Friday from getting off work and also getting a nice meal. I know on today's news on the channel, on the channel 11, they were talking about pizza, and this one should have been number one because it is number it is number one in my my uh, book. Why? Because it's healthy, it's colorful, and it's always having people engaged to just grab on pizza. And because I was loving the pizza, but also it is just a day to just celebrate your neighborhood and and also celebrate the community of just engaging and bringing people closer closer together and also bringing the colors of flavor to uh, gather too because one it's artsy I'm, I'm looking around on the right hand side and towards your left I see the car and it reminds me as a kid when we used to just throw paint on cars but now they are also called murals now and I'm loving that because one it's not just throwing paint anymore it's really making an art into it I just thank you for letting us be allowed to, to actually be a part of you. I want you to just enjoy your day. It is Friday. You don't have to work until Monday, hopefully. But really enjoy this weather. Enjoy just being outdoors and, let, and just letting the kids be free because that is the most important thing. And thank you for everything.
Thank you, Tommy, and thank you, um, Councilman Stokes. Um, so now we're coming to a part of the program, and as Don said earlier, we're not going to hold you long, but um, part of what we're going to be doing today is renaming this park and dedicating it to Michael Dietz, who was a champion and a resident of this neighborhood. So I'm going to call up his brother, Stephen Dietz, and he will take care of that part. Yes, thank you. I mean, uh, as we've heard, I mean, part of this is a celebration of all the changes in the neighborhood. It's a celebration of the mural and the artist. And certainly the neighborhood has changed a lot over the last 15 years. And we are dedicating the park uh, in honor of my brother, who in many ways was not only deeply involved in many of the changes in the neighborhood, but also, you know, represented a kind of civic engagement that I think is a model for all of us. Uh, when my brother, you know, moved to the neighborhood, bought his house in the late 90s, it was a very, very different neighborhood than the one you see today. And when many people asked him about the neighborhood, what he would talk about was its possibilities, its potentials, not, you know, what it was like in the late 90s and the early 2000s. And as part of that, uh, he quickly joined the Charles Rents Community Association because it wasn't just that you know, he wanted a neighborhood to live in. He wanted a neighborhood that he could be deeply involved in. So he joined the Charles and Rose Community Association. He was chair of Midtown Benefits District for three years. He was deeply involved in the urban renewal re ordinance, seeing that through city council. He was deeply involved in the vision plan and in many other smaller things regarding transportation, code enforcement, and the kinds of things that really set the groundwork that are not sexy, that are not, you know, the opening of new restaurants and fancy new buildings, but really allow those things to happen. And so uh, with that, and thinking about all the things that uh, he has done and so many of the other people in the neighborhood have done over the last decade to make this happen, uh, yes, we do. Uh, we will, you know, rename the park uh, the Michael J. Deeds Historic St. Paul Street Park. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Um, so now we're going to just take a few minutes out to acknowledge the funders, the people that actually gave us the money to transform this park into what it is today. A few years ago, if you drove down St. Paul Street, I'm sure many of you can attest that this park did not look like it does. But we are very, very grateful and thankful to a number of funders who made this happen. And I'm going to call them up one by one and give them a few minutes just to say a, a few words. The first person that I'd like to um, um, thank is Healthy Neighborhoods, Inc. Mark Sisman is here. He provided us with a uh, grant last year to do um, so many beautiful things that you see in the park. Um, the landscaping, the, the benches, the, um, the, the um, re trash receptacle, the uh, doggy poop station, um, all of those, I mean, that money was all, you know, uh, we were able to use that in order to make this park what it is today. So without further ado, we're going to call Mark Sisman up to say a few words. So, so what Linda means is that Healthy Neighborhoods and I, we bought our place on this program. All right. uh, <laughs> Car Car Carl and I overdressed. I apologize. Uh, this neighborhood is what cities are about. Uh, the money's nice and we're glad that we're able to do it, but it's really about the spirit of the people that live here. I mean, murals, art, kids, pizza, homegrown pizza, uh, you know, that, that's what this neighborhood and the neighborhoods in Baltimore are about. Uh, we're thrilled to be a partner in about 40 neighborhoods around the city with mortgage money and all sorts of things. But that's not the real coin of the realm here. The coin of the realm is the energy of the people who live and work and eat and enjoy themselves here. Thank you for letting us be a part of this. 
Okay, another funder that we were able to receive money from was part of the Spruce Up grant in which the uh, the, the Ditch Foundation um, funded that. No one from the uh, foundation could be here today, but Central Baltimore Partnership, who administered that um, grant, is here, and we're going to ask Ashley Wallace to come up and say a few words. Hi, everyone. I'm a little short here. Um, I just wanted to thank everyone for coming out tonight. This was one of the first, the first round of the Spruce Up program in Station North last year, thanks to the generous funding of the Deutsch Foundation, um, who were unable to attend tonight. But what was able to happen in this park was so transformational. I, I moved here about five years ago, and it was a very different place. And we were really thankful for the Deutsch Foundation to provide us with a large amount of money to be able to provide a large amount of grants for community projects just like this. And one of the foundations of these grants were really community engagement and community outreach and involvement, where you're hiring local artists to do the benches. You have, you know, you're partnering with Station North to do the open walls, this mural on the ground where there's kids painting, and you're bringing people together in places like this, and community ownership is really happening and taking place. And we're also really proud to fund it for the second year in a row for their final and second phase of improvements. And here you can just see all of the partnerships, and that's what the Center Boulder Partnership is all about, is bringing people together and collaborating. And this is just the perfect example. Um, so the Robert W. Deutsch Foundation, thanks everyone for coming out and, and sends their apologies for not being able to attend. Thank you, Ashley. And now the next person that I want to call up is um, Dr. Zahara Meyerhoff Hieronymus. Um, she was instrumental in um, helping us to get this beautiful mural behind me resurrected and redone. So we're going to have Dr. Sahara to come up first, and then uh, shortly after her, we're going to have the artist himself, Dr. Bob, to come up and say a few words as well. Okay. Does this come out? Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Straight up. There we go. All right, so I wrote what I wanted to say because I tend to talk long. We'll turn it around. But firstly, what a beautiful moment in Dr. Bob's life as an artist and in a community's life to celebrate a park. We the People tells us that it's all of us together or it's all of us apart. Logically, we can appreciate that all of us together is the best option. Symbols are a way of sharing a story that applies to everyone that are archetypal. Bob has always used his art to be part of storytelling and unifying communities. He has always supported community art and the artists who celebrate life through their painting, music, dance, and other artistic expressions. All of the artists who worked with Bob on this project know what a challenge it is to make a living creating art. Bob has given away his genius and talent for many years in order to benefit the public rather than individual buyers. Public art, however, remains unprotected, and his murals have been destroyed in the past by developers, by institutions, and by individuals without even a call to let him know as the artist or give him the opportunity to discuss preservation, restoration, or relocation. So it is my sincerest hope as both his wife, a fellow artist, a creative member of our community, our city, our state, our nation, that this mural will be safe and guarded by the community it is in as it has been for 40 years prior. Parks in each neighborhood are a common space that enhance our sense of belonging in nature as well as neighborhood. So enjoy this beautiful art that is in your midst and let us all together support the creative impulse in ourselves, in our children, and communities. For it is art that can elevate the soul, bring joy to the eyes, ears, and heart it can express our deepest feelings and greatest longings or ideals. And beautiful and symbolic art that tells a story of unity and mutual respect between people and gender is a creative way of bringing peace and progress among us and all our relations. May we the people remind everyone who sees it that as my husband, Dr. Bob, has always said, we are not just the people of Maryland nor of the United States. We are Earth people. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Zohar. 
Now, before I call Dr. Bob up, I do want to acknowledge uh, two artists that um, are not here tonight. Um, first, I want to talk about the mural on the grounds that you're standing on. Uh, that This mural was done in Open Walls 1 about two, maybe three years ago. Um, and this is our first time having a celebration so that we can acknowledge um, the mural, but unfortunately the two, mir I mean, the two artists that did that was unable to make it. And then I want to bring your attention to the Welcome to Charles North mural over here to my left. Um, unfortunately, Michael Owens, who is the um, muralist, had to leave because another mural that he's doing a little further up from us, he got a call that something happened, so he had to leave. But I do want to acknowledge um, Michael as well because we are very, very proud of both of these murals. So with that said, um, I do want to bring your attention to the We the, Art, we the People mural done by nationally known artist Dr. Bob Hieronymus. If you could come up. Okay. All right, what you're actually going to listen to is the completion of my seven hours of interviews with Rolling Stone magazine, who we hope in the future are going to visit this mural and discuss what we've tried to do, not just in this mural, but in other things. So, I've got to get this right. Obviously, I want to thank you for inviting me to say a few words at this event honoring the hard work behind the renovation of this historic park. Your community is obviously full of enthusiasm and enthusiastic citizens who are doers. And I'm proud that my artwork has been a staple of this park for over 40 years. The We the People mural is both a refurbishment and a redesigned extension of a 1974 mural that I did that was greatly faded and in rough shape. And then back in 2010, when I was first asked to restore this piece, oh, I think a couple of those members were Dr. Richard Willis and Dwight Whitley. I know saw Dr. Willis here a little earlier. Now, for several years after that, the neighborhood's organizations like Jubilee Baltimore and Midtown Development tried to raise the funds necessary to meet the budget to achieve this quality. And unfortunately, even with the generations, generous donations of Guppy Management's Alan and Michael Schuchter, it still came down to my lovely wife. Zahara Meyerhoff Hieronymus to raise the $30,000 that we needed to put this together. Now, we employed a hand-picked crew of 15 dedicated artists from the UMBC, MICA, Johns Hopkins University, and together we execu executed my revised design to actually double the mural's size. I completely donated all my time on this job, and obviously, I want to make sure everyone knows this, I wasn't bribed, I didn't get paid one cent. Now, the overall theme of this mural is, now this is the most important part, one people, one planet, the focus on the divine feminine in American symbolism carries the message that the most powerful nation on earth must tap into its female power and learn to lead with compassion instead of domination. Our unacknowledged roots among the indigenous peoples is demonstrated along the lower portion of this mural. Well, I'm sorry, but uh, I keep thinking of all my dead Native American friends who lost their lives to this country. Now, not only did the matrilineal Native American nations honor the power of the female, but their balanced approach to the environment also led to sustainable practices that honored the seventh generation and maintained commerce without despoiling our land. Today, corporate greed is killing our future on this planet, and Americans need to embrace all of what the Native Americans tried to teach our founding fathers, and they were their teachers. Especially, 
about the balance between the sexes and a system of government that is motivated by peace. So before it's too late, let's celebrate we the people because we are one. Thank you. That's, that's propaganda. Wow, how do I follow that? Oh my gosh. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Bob, um, for that beautiful speech. Now, I'm going to stop talking so much, and I'm going to turn the uh, mic over to um, Sergio Martinez. Um, this is almost the end of our program, but we would not have been able to do any of this without the many residents and the volunteers that helped us to um, revitalize this park. So at this time, we want to um, recognize and let you all know who helped to make this happen. But before I call Sergio up, I need to talk about what Sergio did to make this happen. Sergio is an um, artist who has an, uh, a gallery or um, museum on North Avenue. Um, we contracted Sergio last year to do the park design um, for this park. And here we are. We also contracted Sergio to actually make the park benches in which we received the funding from for healthy neighborhoods. These park benches were made by Sergio Martinez. So not to mention all of the many, many hours that he, along with the other volunteers, have put into um, assisting with the renovation of this park. So without further ado, Sergio. Cheers. Thank you, Linda. Uh, first, I would like to re reiterate uh, our thanks for to the funders and to uh, the Deutsch Foundation for their financial contribution to the park. Thank you to Ashley and Central Baltimore Partnership for making this happen. Also, in addition to the fantastic artists who have contributed to the dramatic look of the park, uh, there was a lot of volunteers who worked hard and dedicated a lot of time and hours to making the park what it is today. First, I would like to thank Linda Harrington, who does, yeah! Uh, Linda Harrington took on the initiative of adopting the park. Uh, she was instrumental in securing funding, bringing the project to fruition, managing the project, and spent countless volunteer hours organizing and making this park what it is today. And there's a lot of people who are involved in, in renovating the park, but it was Linda who brought the focus to this park. And she's the one who brought us all here together tonight. So thank you, Linda. We appreciate everything you do for the Charles North community. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Peter Merles in Midtown, for uh, your dedication and support of the park, for maintaining and beautifying the park. Uh, thank you, Wayne Brooks. Clean and Green team for uh, Troy Thompson and Brian Hodge for working hard to plant the sod, doing the trim around the trees, putting the soil, the landscaping, and for in case any of you all missed the enormous, ginormous boulders that we have here, Wayne was responsible for getting this, uh, the Spinal Tap uh, boulders. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Don Donahue, for your support and guidance. <laughs> I have to thank Don. Um, Mike Schechter, thank you very much. I don't think you're here tonight, uh, but thank you for your financial support. Uh, as with this park, so many projects could not have been done without your financial support. Yep, big clap there. Thank you to Alan Minarchek. Did I say it correctly? You got it. Great. Okay. <laughs> for volunteering your time, your skill, and your expertise to help uh, fabricate and install the benches. Without your help, the benches still will not be done today. Uh, thanks to Alex McMurchy, she lives right next door here. She, uh, and to the neighbors that are here, two doors down, uh, who have donated their electricity and water 
when we were uh, working to do the work here, so thank you so much for that. Uh, thank you, Stephen Dietz. Yep, big clap, big applause. Thank you, Stephen Dietz, for organizing the spring and fall flower plantings, the landscaping, and for organizing the park events. And I have a list of the volunteers here who have helped Stephen and helped make this park uh, what it is. It's, the, uh, again, the green team. Thank you to LaVita and Will, to Clyde, Dr. Wonderful for your moral support. I don't see wherever you're hiding, Doctor. Right over here, Doctor, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dwight Whitley, uh, Rachel Cloud Allen again, Alex McMurchy again, Carl Gross, Alec Dinsmore, Kim Donahue, Maria Cobb, Jody Zislow, and Loren Maro Georges. So thank you so much. And last but not least, I would like to thank Dwight Whitley, who was here in the beginning, and uh, he helped to uh, spruce up the park a long time ago before many of us here even knew this park existed. And he laid out the foundation and cleared the path for all the work that allowed this park to be the beautiful park that you see before us here today. So thank you very much, Dwight Whitley. Cheers. Enjoy your evening. Okay, the good news is I'm the last one. Okay. Um, let me say uh, also, uh, you're standing in a park that's not really a park. <laughs> okay, so you, what, what do you mean? Well, technically, this is a five residential lots. Okay, uh, one, two, three, four, five. And thanks to Dwight Whitley and others many years ago, uh, pretty much took over this park. Uh, we can't get electricity and water because this is not a park, okay? This technically, though the city owns it, uh, BG&E would have all kinds of problems with us getting water, et cetera. So we're gonna have to talk to Jack Young about this eventually, and Carl, we'll get that going. Uh, but, but in the meantime, we've, uh, we've been able to secure, fortunately, another spruce, spruce up grant to where we are going to uh, try to be very uh, uh, environmentally conscious, and we are going to take rainwater off of this root, this building here, and collect it into barrels that we can so we can water this these plants uh, because we've been unable to have a water meter, etc. So uh, that's part of Spruce Up Grant. We're also doing solar lighting here, so uh, be again environmentally friendly. So that's the plan over the next year or so regarding the park, which I believe will really help a lot. Uh, let me say in closing, thank you to all of you for coming. Uh, also, a very special thanks to uh, Joe Squared for the pizza. Uh, oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> yeah. Woo-hoo. Uh, thank you to, uh, uh, was there a street closure? I kind of missed this one. No parking. Okay, okay, we're good there. Okay, Major Shepherd for the no parking uh, here. Okay, <laughs> far out. Psychedelic. Okay, uh, to all the artists, to the musicians, uh, this is uh, Brad and to uh, 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 Luke. Uh, and if you don't see them here, they also, I jam with them. Okay, sorry guys. On Tuesday nights at Liam's, okay, uh, at 7, 7 30, 8 o'clock. Every Tuesday night, if you want to come and join us, great. All right, I'll be quiet. Uh, finally, to add the Photographer, okay, appreciate that. And to any media in attendance, thank you and may God bless, as Red Skelton used to say. Okay, good, good. <laughs> go ahead. Bob. I apologize. There are some of the artists that I worked with here uh, that are here right now. Could you please come forward? I want people to see you. Where are you, Bill? Bill? Casey? There are others, there are others. All right, so. Hey, Matt, of course. Thank you. Good job. And thank you. All right, all right. One last thing about this. When we worked on this muriel, as they call it in Balmer, um, we hit a string of 97 degree days. I think it was about seven to 10. But on this wall, it was 104 degrees. You could not tell our African-Americans from the Chinese from the whites, literally. When you guys, remember that? Remember those shots we took? They were all brown. Everybody was brown. And I want to thank, this was part of the best crew of artists 
I ever worked with. They were extraordinary. So, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Rock. And I apologize to you. You got to lose. Okay, so we still have more pizza, more drinks, more cookies. So eat, drink, and be merry. We're going to be here until 8 o'clock tonight. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Okay.